Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 9.2, Adding and Subtracting Functions. So yesterday we did a little bit of exploration of the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of different functions. Um, and hopefully you learned that the domain of f plus g is found by finding the intersection of the domain of f and the domain of g. And this is true for f minus g and for the domain of f times g as well. Um, and this is just because, you know, if a function doesn't exist in a certain area, then the product or sum or difference can exist in that area also. So it's basically only where f the function for f and the function for g already exist. And um, so that's the called the intersection. Um, and the domain of f over g is very, very similar, but not quite exactly the same, just because we have to have an extra restriction, which is that g cannot be equal to 0. So the domain of f over g is the domain of f uh, intersected with the domain of g where x, uh, sorry, where g is not equal to 0, okay, because we don't want to have 0 in the bottom. So that's basically all we learned. We also learned that the range of all of these things is uh, unpredictable. So basically, we'd have to look at the graph and figure it out. That's the only way to do it. You can't just add the y values together or something silly like that because it's just not going to work out. So that is that. Um, and so let's just do some examples here. Example A, if f of x equals negative x squared plus 3 and g of x equals 2x sketch f plus g and f minus g state the char characteristics of the functions. I'm actually only going to sketch f plus g just uh, for time's sake but let's just try it. So f of x, um, the domain of f of x is x in r and the domain of g of x is also x in r so that means we're going to be totally free um, all the way across the x values. The range of f is at y in r such that y is less than equal to 3. It is a parabola. And the range of g is y in r. And so um, now if you thought that the range was going to be affected by the original ranges, then we might think that this 3 might be involved or that we might have no limits on it um, because of f, the ranges of f and g. But actually, if we actually find the function, we'll see that that is not at all true. So f plus g, we're just going to add the two algebra uh, algebraic expressions together, so negative x squared plus 3 plus 2x, and we could rearrange that to be in standard form. And the reason I'm doing that is because I do need to graph it. You can see that it ends up being a parabola, and uh, that's something that we know how to graph. So we will go ahead and do that. So negative x minus 3 and x plus 1. You should know how to graph parabolas. If you don't, then um, you need to go practice. So um, go and get some supplemental materials and practice these things. So the zeros are x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. So I'm just going to put those in here. And those are the x-intercepts, which is also a characteristic of the function that I am going to need. Um, and then the vertex is going to be uh, hk, right, for that form y equals a x minus h squared plus k. And um, we can just find h by doing um, the sum of the zeros divided by 2, which ends up being 1. And to find the k, we're just going to plug it into f plus g, so it's f plus g of 1. Um, so you put, just put it into this one, or you could put it into the top one if you want. So negative 1 squared plus 3 plus 2 times 1, that ends up being 4. So we have a vertex at 1, 4. Just plug that in there. And um, of course the parabola has the step pattern and it's opening downwards because it's negative here. So the step pattern is 1. 1 over 1 down, 1 over 3 down, 1 over 5 down, 1 over 7 down, and so forth. Um, so hopefully you remember that stuff, and of course it's symmetrical across the axis of symmetry. So I'm just going to try to connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner, like this, and like this. There you go. And so we have the vertex, and that gives us the um, range of this function, the range of f plus g is actually 
uh, y in R such that y is less than equal to 4. So it really has nothing to do with the original ranges. And of course the domain of f plus g is going to be x in R because it's a parabola, so it has no limitation on its domain, and neither did the original functions, right? And we have our x-intercept. You can see our y-intercept is 3, um, and uh, we could talk about symmetry. It has none. We could talk about end behaviors um, and all of that good stuff, if you remember all the characteristics of functions we talked about in 1.3 a long time ago. You can go back and watch that video if you want. Um, but you don't have to. So this is f plus g, and to find f minus g it would be really similar. I'm just going to find f minus g, I'm not going to graph it or anything. So f minus g, we just take the f function, which is negative x squared plus 3, and we subtract off g of x, which is negative, which is 2x, so minus 2x. And there you have it, It's that's what f minus g is, and we just use the algebra um, in the way you would go, so you could graph that if you wanted and uh, that would be fine. But what's the important part to, no to note is that the domain of f plus g is the same as the domain of f minus g. Um, so these are going to be equal, which is x in r. But the range of f minus g is not necessarily the same thing as f plus g. In this case it happens to be, but that is not always the case, okay? So example B, find the domain and range. Actually, we're just going to find the domain of f plus g and f minus g if f of x equals log base 2 of x plus 5 and g of x equals 10 to the x. Um, so we know that the domain of the log function is x in r such that x is greater than negative 5, right? The domain is only affected by the d value, so this is the d value, and the domain of g because it's an exponential value, it is not restricted at all. So the domain of f plus g is going to be the same as the domain of f minus g, of course, because they have to be equal, and that's going to be the intersection of these two. So because only the domain of f is limited, that is the one that we are going to take. So it's um, x in r such that x is greater than negative 5. So just to make this really clear for you, I'm going to do, I'm going to write my own example right here. Um, so let's say I wanted to find the domain of f plus g uh, for, let's do f is negative uh, 1, 3, um, 2, 8, and 6, 5. Okay? And then I'm going to do g is negative 1, 5, um, I'm going to do 6, 7, actually uh, maybe I'll do 6, 0, and I'm going to do 7, 1, like that, okay. So we can see that the domain of f is negative 1, 2, and 6, while the domain of g is negative 1, 6, and 7. And we actually did this in chapter 1. We did the sum of these two uh, functions. And we only add it if the x value is the same, right? So I can only use this, these two here and these two here because they have the same x value. So the domain of f plus g is only going to be where we're intersecting, right? So negative 1 is in both of them and 6 is in both of them. And that is going to be our entire domain, just like that, okay? that It's that simple, all right? And if we wanted to find the range, we would just add the things together and we would write the numbers down, and that would be the range. So let's do some examples. A deer population is given by p of t equals 5,000 minus 1,000 cos pi over 6t, where t is in months. Um, usually, but the wolf population is being kept in check by disease, so the deer population is increased by 50 deer per month. Write the new equation for deer population and sketch. So now P of T, or new, I guess our new population, P1 of T, let's call it, is equal to 5,000 minus 1,000 cos pi over 6t plus 50t, and the reason is because it's 50 deer per month, so 50t. Um, it's increasing linearly. So um, now we have a, a new function like this, and uh, basically if you think about how uh, cos works, I can rewrite it as follows. This is like a negative 1,000 cos pi over 6t plus 5,000 plus 50t. 
and this is actually going to act as the axis for the new function. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and graph that for you on a graphing calculator system, and, uh, and I'll bring it back to you, and you can see it. Okay, so here I have drawn negative uh, 1,000 cos pi over 6t plus 5,000, the original p of t. That's what this is right here, p of t. And uh, if you look at this one, this is actually p1 of t. So oops, um, you can see that I've drawn 50t plus 5,000 into there. That's the dotted line, and um, the p1 of t has an axis along the 50t plus 5,000. It's going up and down, up and down, up and down, just like a regular cos function. You can see it actually starts at the very bottom like a regular negative cos function would, and it moves its way along the uh, new axis that we've given it. Okay? All right, so let's do one more. We want to explore the graphs of f plus g if f of x equals x squared and g of x equals nx. Of course, we know what x squared looks like. Um, it looks like this, and we just want to do, um, we want to think about, you know, g of x equals nx, meaning we're doing x squared plus, um, plus 0. We're doing x squared plus x. We're doing x squared plus 2x, and so forth, like this. And of course, we know what x squared looks like, and we also know what x squared plus um, x looks like. If we factor it, it's x times x plus 1, so we expect our zeros to be 0 and negative 1. Here we get x times x plus 2, so 0 and negative 2. Uh, x times x plus 3, 0 and negative 3. So we can really look at the family of functions by just messing around with the addition of these functions. Um, and if we want to look at those graphs, they look like this. So we start with x squared, and if we want to add x squared plus x, it looks like that. x squared plus 2x, x squared plus 3x, x squared plus 4x, x squared plus 5x, x plus x squared plus 6x, x squared plus 7x, and so forth, okay? So we can just do that forever and ever and ever. It's the family of functions that have um, nx as the second function, right? x squared plus nx. Okay? So anyways, there are a lot of fun things to be done with adding and subtracting of functions. Basically, we learned about finding the domain and the range and um, adding s algebraically. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, ask me in class, and I will see you soon. Bye!